Next on the Worcester News tonight, college campuses across Central Mass crack down on one of the hottest gifts of 2015. And reimbursements are on the way for city drivers towed during Sunday night's snowstorm. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McCone. It was one of the most popular toys or gadgets of 2015. Now, most of the colleges and universities in Worcester County have banned the use of hoverboards. The popular electronic scooters came under scrutiny over concerns they pose a fire hazard. Hoverboards have been a hit with college students and could be found across campuses in Central Mass during first semester. A lot of people have them. Um, a lot of people my age, even younger kids have them too. So. All my friends have it, so like I was about to go get one before they sent me that email saying it was banned from campus. Worcester State is cracking down on the devices, banning them from campus, and they aren't alone. Most of the colleges in Central Mass have installed similar policies, citing concerns that hoverboards present a fire hazard. They sent an email to everyone on campus saying that they're completely banned and they're not allowed on campus, um, confirming that they are dangerous. They may be popular, but some students say the decision to ban hoverboards was the right one, saying the safety of everyone on campus should come before the gift of 2015. To me, they're kind of just like toys anyways. Um, and if they're dangerous, you don't want to just, you know, have anything happen on campus where people get injured just because it's, you know, something fun to roll around on. A Worcester activist appears in court this morning. He faces multiple charges, including assault and battery on a police officer after an incident at Monday's Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast. But 71-year-old Chris Horton and his lawyer say he did nothing wrong, and he is the victim here. Our Patricia Nicholas was in court today and has the latest. 71-year-old Chris Horton pleads not guilty in Central District Court on charges of assault and battery on a police officer, disorderly conduct, and resisting arrest. I felt outraged, in particular, because this was happening at an MLK Day event. I certainly have no recollection of striking or shoving anyone, and I don't recognize that as something that I would do, ever. Horton was arrested Monday at the Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast. A press release from Quinsingaman Community College says he assaulted a police officer. Horton says he was passing out flyers on behalf of the anti-foreclosure team. He says he was asked to stop and did, but was then allegedly taken down by police. He was being literally dragged out of the room. They placed their foot, she, I believe she placed her foot in front of him, pushed him, pushed him to the ground. Once he was on the ground, they handcuffed him. I was treated like a criminal. I was handing out flyers, and I had stopped handing out flyers at the time I was taken down. I was looking for a colleague on the other side of the room so that we could talk. Horton was then taken to the hospital where he was treated for injuries. The Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast Committee tells us they didn't want the incident to go any further. Horton says he regrets his arrest did happen at the breakfast honoring Dr. King. This is a big distraction from what we're trying to do. He takes the focus off the real issue. Patricia Nicholas, Worcester News Tonight. Worcester police adding five new officers to their department Wednesday. The swearing in ceremony taking place at City Hall this afternoon. These officers are part of the new 36 person class for the Worcester Police Department, but they've already gone through poli the police academy training. The new additions to the department took the oath of office and received their badges. Each was pinned by a family member. Yeah, it's a great moment to have for us together. You know, it's something that we both can be proud of myself in and I've worked very hard to get here, so I'm glad I could share it with my dad. They've had my backs um, all along the way, and uh, it's, it's been great to have them present and uh, just being there for me. All five officers will start Monday and will be assigned to foot patrols. State Senator Michael Moore is just back from a trip to Colorado. Moore and other members of the legislature were there to study that state's legalization and regulation of marijuana. Senator Moore says he's more convinced than ever man marijuana operations like those in Colorado won't work in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, but since I've gone out there and heard the data from public health, from the industry, from um, the administration, from law enforcement, I walked away even more um, um, so stronger in my belief that this is a bad policy move for the state of Massachusetts and for the voters. 
Moore was part of a seven-member fact-finding group from the Senate's Special Committee on Marijuana. The committee plans to release its recommendations on the legalization of marijuana in February. Meanwhile, a proposal for a medical marijuana dispensary in Sturbridge is moving forward. The town's Board of Selectmen voted 3-2 to two to allow Heal Inc.'s application to move forward to the State Department of Public Health. Heal Inc. wants to build a dispensary on Route 20 at the Sturbridge Business Park. The company is waiting for an invitation from health officials to proceed to the third phase of the application process. That's submitting its citing profile. Massachusetts and federal law enforcement agencies say they're working together to crack down on doctors and other health care providers who illegally prescribe or dispense opioid painkillers. Massachusetts Attorney General Maura Healy says her office formed a task force with the FBI, DEA and the Department of Health and Human Services to share information on investigations. Healy says the overprescribing of opioid painkillers is a key factor in opioid related overdoses and deaths. Now, for the first time, we're going to make a concerted effort to work together to share information, to share data. And that's going to lead to more prosecutions, more investigations, and ultimately the end to illegal and unlawful prescribing practices in this state. Here. More than 1,200 people died from overdoses in 2014. We first told you last night the city will be refunding money to residents if their cars were towed during the last declared winter parking ban. More than 300 people's cars were towed, and tonight the city is hopeful those affected will be getting their money back soon. Randy Madison is following the story and has more. After towing 347 cars from city streets Monday morning, the city is giving people their money back. We recognize that because the notice went out so late, it really wasn't fair to people. It really didn't give people enough opportunity to move their cars. We do need to make it right. And I think the steps the manager's taking is that step to make it right. If your car was towed because of the winter parking ban, you'll get a refund. City officials say letters went out today to those car owners explaining how to get their money back. The city is hoping to issue refunds quickly. Should hopefully be, you know, I would say no more than a week or so, um, hopefully sooner. Um, you know, soon as, like I said, as soon as we get them, they're going to try to turn that around the next day and, and get them out. The parking ban was issued late Sunday night because of snow, meaning cars had to be parked off city streets. Those that weren't were towed, but the announcement wasn't made until well after most people were asleep. The lack of notice caused an uproar on Monday as people scrambled to track down their cars. City officials say as long as someone can show them a receipt, they'll get their money back. They are still trying to figure out where the money for the refunds will come from. Just like any snow event, um, you know, the money does, does come from the taxpayers, yes. It's the latest issue the city has dealt with this winter season. And with more snow expected this weekend, residents are hoping it won't produce any more headaches. I still have confidence in our DPW. They do an excellent job. City manager's on top of it. And I know they have an internal discussions to make sure that they have a very clear path as they go forward. Andy Madison, Worcester News Tonight. A new project aims to make it easier to get around and find places in Worcester. It's been in the works for years now, and these new signs may help Worcester become more of a destination for tourists. Our Olivia Lemon has the story. It's been in the works for more than 10 years. Wednesday, the new wayfinding project for Worcester was presented to the public. There's a, a a number of different styles that you'll see being erected. I think the most noticeable ones are going to be the very large signs. And I think that uh, the, the public is going to be very impressed when they're installed. DPW Director of Engineering Joseph Barboni says more than 200 signs will be installed in the city by the summer of 2017. He says these signs will be easier to read. It's not only going to help people to get around, but it's going to give us a distinct um, identity and I think that that's one of the main focuses of the, the project. Selbert Perkins design has created signage for places like London and Los Angeles. Barboni says having a navigation system like those destinations will help Worcester. He says the current system doesn't allow for easy updates. This package will allow us to keep everything fresh and keep everything up to date and I think that that's going to be uh, 
uh, a big improvement for the public. The three million dollar project will also incorporate public art on bigger pieces like this model. There's so many stories uh, that we want to incorporate but we want to do it in an interesting way. The wayfinding system will be incorporated into the Woo Pass app. It will allow people to enter in codes for each place they see on a sign to learn more about the business or destination. If you have your system set up in such a manner, it would even bing you, ding you, and let you know as you're walking past what other things are within the region. Olivia Lemon, 